St. Patrick's on Sunday. We're here again in Nashville. And the epistle for this Passion Sunday is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 9. Brethren, Christ being come as a high priest of the good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, neither by the blood of goats nor of, or of calves, but by, by his own blood, entered once into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and of oxen and the ashes of an heifer, being sprinkled, sanctified such as are defiled, through the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who by the Holy Ghost offered himself unspotted unto God, cleanse our conscience from dead works, to serve the living God. Therefore he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death, for the redemption of these transgressions, which were under the former Testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Gospel, being that according to St. John chapter 8. At that time Jesus said to the multitudes of the Jews, Which of you shall convict me of sin? If I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. Therefore you hear them not, because you are not of God. The Jews therefore answered and said to him, Do not we say well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my Father, and you have dishonored me. But I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and, and judgeth. And men and men I say unto you, If any man keep my word, he shall not see death forever. Then Jesus therefore said, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If any man keep my word, he shall not taste death forever. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom dost thou make thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father that glorifieth me, of whom you say that he is your God. And you are not known, you, you have not known him, but I know him. And if I shall say that I know him not, I shall be like unto you, a liar. But I do know him, and do keep his word. Abraham your father rejoiced that he might see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews therefore said to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, In many men I say unto you, Before Abraham was made, I am. They took up stones therefore to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out to the temple. That's what the words of today's holy gospel. Father's only goes to men. Pay a few considerations as we enter this passion time. Cover the statues, cover the crucifix. But we are still in the Catholic Church. And uh, there is a time just before the crucifixion that there is a great battle. And notice that this battle is between our Lord Jesus Christ and his own followers. It is not a battle between Christ and the Romans and Christ and all the pagans. It's a battle between Jesus Christ, God made man, the head of the Holy Mother Church, and the members of that church, and particularly the priests and the patriarchs and the bishops of that church. This happened 2,000 years ago, and it's happening now. One point that St. Augustine makes, he says, Note in this battle, this very long argument, between the Lord Jesus Christ and the Jews, which is chapter 8 of the Gospel of St. John. We pick up verse 46, we're towards the end of that chapter, and a very long debate between the Lord Jesus Christ and the wicked Jews that are calling him a devil. He says that they are liars and sons of the father of lies. And then he says, if you were of God, you would hear the words of God. But you do not hear the words of God because you are not of God. He makes a direct accusation. You are not of God, and that is why you don't hear the words of God. I speak the words of God. Now, what has Jesus, what have the Jews been waiting for for 4,000 years? Since Adam. They have been waiting for the coming of the Messiah. And what do they believe in? They believe in the Messiah. And what are the people of? They're the people of the Messiah. And now the Messiah has come. And now the Messiah is in their midst. 
And now the Messiah performs miracles that were long prophesied. A star came and announced his, his beginning. And he is there preaching the word of God and performing miracles. And he's about to establish his kingdom. And who are his greatest enemies? They are the members of his own church. Who are called the people of God. The people of God are the principal enemies of God. How did it happen that the people of God become the main enemies of God? Satan infiltrated the church of the Old Testament. And he got a new spirit in that church. He infiltrated the church of the Old Testament. And he got them to worship a new God which was themselves. The Jews no longer believe that they are the people of God. But they are God himself. They worship the Jews and no longer the God of the Jews. And now we come 2,000 years later, what do we have? The people of God of the New Testament. The Catholic Church, which is the church for all men, the universal church. So what do we have as a heresy today? People of God now believe that man is God. 2,000 years ago, the Jews believed the Jews are God. Now we are 2,000 years later, and the people of God believe that they are God. What is the essence of Vatican II? It is the worship of man. God has gone out of the temple. And hence St. Augustine says, note this in this argument. The Jews make two accusations against Jesus Christ. That is, thou hast the devil, and thou art a Samaritan. He responds, I have not a devil. But he does not respond that he is not a Samaritan. He does not say no to the second accusation, because he is a Samaritan. And the word Samaritan means stranger. He comes from a different land. And yet the stranger, how is it that God made man whose entire body is made of Jewish flesh, his entire body is made of the flesh of Abraham, his entire body is of the people that are chosen by God, which are called the chosen people, and yet there he is amongst his own chosen people, and they say, thou art a Samaritan. You're not part of our family. You're not a real Jew. You don't really belong to us. You are an outcast. Or we would say today, you are a schismatic. You are excommunicated. You are an outcast. This is not something new in our holy church. And so what happened 2,000 years ago? And then Jesus Christ, what did he say to St. Augustine? Notice that our Lord Jesus Christ said, I do not have a devil, but I am a Samaritan. He decided to make it clear that he was a Samaritan. Not only by not answering the objection of the Jews today, but in another place he says that he is the Good Samaritan, so that there might be no, com no confusion. He is called the Good Samaritan. And when they said he is a Samaritan, which is a half-Jew and half-Gentile, who is not really a Jew and not really a Gentile, he's wicked on both sides. And he says, I am, I am a Samaritan. I am a stranger. I am not of your people. Now here is the mystery. Who changed? Did Jesus Christ stop being a Jew? Or did the Jews stop being the people of Jesus Christ? What happened? And what happened was, the Jews changed their religion. They changed their belief about Jesus Christ. And this is what happened in the mystical body of Christ. And the Lord himself said it would happen. Just like in my physical body I was crucified, so in my mystical body I shall be crucified. Just like my own people brought me to death at the first crucifixion, so my own people will bring me to death at the last crucifixion, the crucifixion of the church. Just as there's a miraculous resurrection of his body the first time, there'll be a miraculous resurrection of his mystical body the second time. Just as he quickly rose the first time, he shall quickly rise the second time. And who are going to be the principal enemies of Jesus Christ in the year 2021? As our church is going through its crucifixion, which began in a most bloody manner, the three hours of the cross began in 1962, when Jesus Christ was put on trial at Vatican II. And he was found guilty at the sessions of the council. And 16 documents were written against him. And he was found guilty, and all those that would, would not go along with, these, with this wicked counsel and the wicked judgment of the bishops of the church under the Holy Father, Pope Paul VI, and John XXIII before him. When they, when they decided to go against us, they would be called outcasts in the temple. What happened? These people went out of the temple. 
these people were no longer the people of God. And hence we see in our times, at the very end of the gospel today, chapter 8, and Jesus went out of the temple. Now remember, when he went out of the temple, did the Jewish people stop being the people of God? This is one of the many arguments against the grave error of Sadducianism. Because Jesus Christ did go out of the temple, and Jesus Christ did not obey Caiaphas and his wicked commands, and yet Jesus Christ recognized him as the head of the Holy Church all the way until the moment of his own crucifixion. But his spirit went out of the temple, and he told his apostles, do not follow this wicked spirit of Caiaphas. And yet Caiaphas remained the high priest, and the temple remained a holy temple until 3 p.m. on Good Friday, when the veil was rent from top to bottom, and we have the transition between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It is hard to believe on Holy Thursday night. And hard to believe on Good Friday morning. When Jesus Christ is standing in the temple of God. The true temple of God. Standing in front of the true Pope of the Old Testament. And that true Pope of the Old Testament is saying to him. You are condemned. Thou hast blasphemed. Because thou sayest thou art God. And when they hear him say he's God. They pick up stones who cast at him. And remember that the heresies of Vatican II are essentially the same. The Vatican II Church, why does it accept ecumenism? Why is it going along with all other religions? Why does it accept the evil of evolution? Why does it accept the customs of the modern world and change its liturgy to be more human and to take the divine out of its sacred liturgy, which is no longer sacred, but a sacrilege and a blasphemy? Why do they do all these things? It is quite simple. Because the Vatican II Church believes it is God, that man is God, and that they will take away the worship of God. And the one thing they cannot tolerate is anyone that says Jesus Christ is God and only God. He is that all other gods are devils. And that there is only one truth. And I, the Catholic Church, am the way and the truth and the life. And when we stand up in our world today and say, I, the mystical body of Christ, and the only way in all Protestant religions and all false religions, they are not the way. I am the truth. And all the teachings that are other than the teachings of the church, the teachings of Jesus Christ in the last 2,000 years, they are not the truth. And there is only life in our Holy Mother, the church. This cannot be tolerated in our times. Therefore, Jesus Christ hides himself and goes out from the temple. And yet he is still there. It is still the church of God. Now, when Jesus Christ's physical body died, and his soul went down into limbo, and his body remained in the tomb. In the, in the, in the, uh, the, the tomb. And in the, in the death of the mystical body of Christ, which must happen right now, we're simply fulfilling prophecy. So also the, the body is attacked. The Catholic Church is despised. The Catholic priests are despised. The hierarchy of the church is despised. And in many ways, rightly so, because of the wickedness of the priests, the wickedness of the bishops, the wickedness of the Holy Father. This wickedness has been shown to the whole world, and they mock us. And our church is getting weaker and weaker. It is being scourged and crowned with thorns and being crucified. And it is physically, mystically dying. But what is going to happen? There shall be a resurrection. But who are the causes of this death? Remember what our Lord said to Pilate. Pilate is the one who sent the soldiers to crucify Christ. But what did Jesus Christ say to Pilate? Those who handed me over to you... They have committed the greater sin. And so likewise in our church today, the, the modern Bilderbergers, the one world government rulers, modern Jews, the Bilderbergers, and the modern governments, and the modern communists, they are the ones who are carrying the sword. They are the ones who have the nails. And they are, they are the ones bringing the whip and bringing about the suffering and crucifixion of the church. Well, who are the ones that are most wicked? Those that have handed over the mystical body of Christ to its enemies. And these are the bishops and priests and faithful also of our Holy Mother, the Church. Just like 2,000 years ago, the Jews said, Let his blood be upon us and upon our children. So now, 2,000 years later, it is the Catholics, the Catholic faithful, and not only the wicked bishops and priests, who are saying, Let the blood of this mystical body be upon ourselves and upon our children. We are the ones bringing about the death of our own church. But before the crucifixion physically happened, a few weeks before Jesus Christ hid himself and went out from the temple, his spirit went out. 
And the Spirit remained in his apostles. And the Spirit remained in a few of the faithful Jews throughout the world. But those that were in the places of power, and those that were running the, the, the temple, running the sacrifices, running the, 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 the machinery of the Holy Church of the Old Testament, they were enemies of God. And the friends of God were already in hiding, and they were under fear of persecution. Remember when the when the Shuya days before Lazarus was risen from the dead, the young man, the blind man born, the man born blind was cured, and the parents were afraid to say that he was cured by Christ because they were terrified of being cast out of the synagogue for being followers of Christ. And now we are a time in our Holy Mother Church where if we follow Christ, we shall be cast out of the synagogue. There is nothing new under the sun. It is simply happening now in our times as it happened before. And the end result shall be the same. And the end result shall be that the false church, those that are not following the tradition of the ancients, the God shall go out. There shall be a renting the veil from top to bottom as there was 2,000 years ago. And there shall be a resurrection of the true church. And there shall be a bringing back of a great age of glory in our mystical body of Christ. As happened before in the time of the Maccabees in the Old Testament, so it shall happen now in our times by the rising up of a great monarch and by a, a, a conclusion of the chastisement, by a victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the bringing of all kingdoms to recognize that Jesus Christ is God and King, not only of our souls and hearts, but of, ever, of the entirety of our bodies and all of our civilizations, all of our cities, all of our governments, all of our, our, our organizations, of the secular and religious. And therefore, there will be a complete recognition of the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. He shall reign. And the prophecy of Daniel shall be fulfilled again, by which the little pebbles will hit a great stone statue. But the statue it's going to hit is going to be the little pebbles are going to hit it at the iron and clay feet. And out shall rise from this little bitty pebble a great mountain, and it shall last forever. Our church shall have its victory again in the victory of Mary. Let us persevere in the battle and be not surprised. We must experience the same things our ancestors experienced. As St. Athanasius said, they are the churches, we have the faith. Let us keep that faith, and let us. Let, and the time will come when we shall also get the churches back in due time. It shall come. Victory is in our hands. Victory is ours, not those of the enemy of God. Let us be hearers of the word, that who, those who are of God shall hear his word. Let us ask the Blessed Virgin Mary to make sure that we truly remain of God, and do truly hear his word, and remain faithful, usque ad mortem, Mortem autem crucis. Remain faithful even unto death, even unto the death of the cross. Because I bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.